much for joining us here. We are live from the Pleasant Inn. Watching on the internet right now, you're coming. We are coming to you live from Islington in London. Uh, my name is John Hastings. Welcome to uh, Live at the Pleasance, an amazing internet chat show filled with amazing guests <laughs> that will be coming at you in a little bit. You're going to see three amazing performers who are performing at the Pleasance in Edinburgh in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, on the show tonight we have the fantastic Pierre Novelli. <laughs> Awesome Rachel Paris! Yeah. And we have the illustrious Mr. Chris Turner! Yeah. Excellent. And I am, uh, I am John Hastings. I will be guiding you uh, through the show. Uh, people, if you want to tweet in, tweet at the Pleasants. Uh, the people at the show will not be tweeting. The phones are off. <laughs> that was a joke before the show started. I told everyone to tell their, turn their phones off. And then they all looked at me like I just punched a baby and blamed them. You can tell that some of the crowd are really good and some of the crowd are uh, here because their boss made them come <laughs> and then didn't open the bar as was promised. So it's gonna be a bit of a tense 45 minutes to an hour for everyone at home, but uh, I'm having a great time. And uh, I feel like the kneeling was unnecessary. <laughs> oh no, Barney is giving me a thumbs. It's weird to call a man who looks like a baby, Barney. <laughs> Can Barnett, can you stand in front of the camera and show the people at home what you look like? <laughs> like, this is not a Barney, right? <laughs> like, it's just, because like, Barney's a man with a mustache, he's got a lunch pail, he'd be like, look, he'd look at my hands and be like, that's not for working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not all the jokes are going to be funny, all right? But if you could fake it, that would be appreciated. <laughs> Remember before with Barney's face? Barney, how do you think the show's going so far? Better than, we, better than expected. It's on the internet. <laughs> better than expected. It's on the internet? What were you expecting? Like a two girls, one cup situation? There's still time. <laughs> For those of you that groaned, I am with you. Because there was a lot of enthusiasm in his voice. <laughs> There's still time. We can get a tarp. It's very exciting. Thank you, Barney. You can go do your kid. Barney, everybody. Yes. Well, enough of my falderall and poppycock. Now we are going to do one of the things that we rehearsed, which was the transition, where I walk over from here to there. Now you're thinking, wow, that's got to be really easy. We'll find out if it is. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to move over there, and then we're going to welcome Pierre. And uh, we should have probably thought out how to do this smoother. <laughs> no, it's cheap now. It's cheap. Miraculous! <laughs> Hi, everyone out there. Am I in frame? Al? A lot of people are whispering. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's, we've moved seamlessly from monologue zone into the chat aria, which is area, but said in a French accent because there's a person from French Canada here. You don't know that because you weren't here for the beginning of the show because you tuned in late. What were you doing? Does the Gilded Balloon have a fucking Ustream show? <laughs> No, they fucking don't. Underbelly would, but we fucking got to it first, and Charlie! <laughs> How was the show? Pretty good. John Hastings guaranteed he'll never play in the cow ever again, <laughs> and made inside jokes that just people who work at the fringe year-round found funny. <laughs> Welcome to Edinburgh, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for our first guest? Are we ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first act is performing at 9.45 at the This. His show is called Cool Peter. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pierre Novelli, everybody! Hello, Pierre. Hi, John. How are you? I'm good. I'm just clipping a tiny, hairy thing to my shirt, so I feel, I feel great about that. Yeah. The times we've had. That's right. Clipping things to each other's shirts. What a summer. Right? An illustrious time. A Canadian and a South African. We met together in Austria, and we clipped things to each other. All day and all night. Mm, I'm so glad you walked down this weird riff road. Clipping while I went on. and yodeling. Mm. Yodeling and clipping. And what did the yodel sound like, Novelli? They sounded like love, John. <laughs> That's how they sounded to me. You this look like a, you could be Austrian. Oh, 
I could be a poster child for an Austrian organization that was popular in the 30s and 40s, my friend. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen you looking inspiringly towards the Russian border, haven't I? Often. Like Anytime the... I'm in the Baltic Sea. I'm not allowed to go anywhere near the Russian border because they get spooked and old people throw things at me. Yeah. They're, They're back! <laughs> it's just maneuvers. Yeah. You said that last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what internet chat show would bring you to this place? They do a... A macadamia nut latte <laughs> that will blow your mind. And you're like, macadamia nut latte? Really? We've gone that far? I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. I didn't even think there was milk in the macadamia nut. I create, quite frankly don't know what that is, but they do it great at Operation Barbosa. There's, there's a, a Turkish restaurant of some kind. I've never been inside. Near, like really? In Islington. But it's called Gallipoli again. Which I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they know that that's a weird... <laughs> Gallipoli again. Oh. It's interesting because there's... In, what it's I, a little lighthearted. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's funny for us, but if you're from Australia and New Zealand, you're like, yeah. never again. Never again. <laughs> Very much the point. Yeah. Well, there was... Uh, when I lived in Toronto, I lived uh, next to Chinatown, and there was a restaurant at the gates of Chinatown uh, called Cum Jug. <laughs> Spelled the way it sounds. <laughs> and it fascinates everyone because, like, they went to a sign maker. Yeah. What are you going to call your restaurant? <laughs> Come jug. And it means something like bountiful feast. But not what it's... Mm. And that doesn't help you. Like, what it... Oh, the feast will be... I'm sure I'm to sure. fill a jug. Sure. <laughs> Is that the line? That's the line? Okay. Huh? I used to live near a hairdresser's called I Am Hair. <laughs> Which I always liked. So confident. Like a, <laughs> yeah. like a sort of Walter White approach to. They're, they're the one that knocks? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Like someone went, That's, that hairstyle's unstable, it won't hold. And they went, I am hair! Like they were like a mad scientist. Let me, because you're not from England either. You're from no. South Africa. Well, yeah. Have you noticed also that barber shops and hairstyling salons. The Western part. You, the couldn't old, the be old more, part. you couldn't be more vague. No, what part I, of London do you live in? The British part. I live in. I live in the. No, I live in. Uh, you can say. Down the road. There, there's not the road. a billion people. There's probably four people, one of whom is probably Ryan Taylor on his phone in the hallway. Yeah. I live, I live uh, Holloway Road. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, we live in the same neighborhood. Because I live in Herringay, yeah. and that's Turkish Gent Central. And when I walk into those barber shops, they are. Oh, nope. Oh, that wasn't for me. Okay. There's a lot of things over there, and I could hear them just going like this. I, oh, uh, and I'm afraid like, I like, sat yeah. on a wire, or I, like, we're now suddenly on Vimeo all of a sudden. We got kicked <laughs> off of YouTube. <laughs> uh, so you're preparing for Edinburgh Fringe 2016. Edinburgh 2016. Edinburgh yeah. 2016. What number fringe is this for you? I'm going to guess fourth. S uh, seventh. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> third, third hour. Third show. So I was seventh sort of close. Fringe. Seventh Fringe, yeah. and and the show is called Cool Peter. Yeah. And why is your show called Cool Peter? Uh, it's about being a cool guy. If you are, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna say that again, not into my water bottle, <laughs> which you are. Thank you. And uh, how are you feeling about the show emotionally? It, emotionally. Are you where we all are right now in July, where we're calling our various representatives and going, "How about instead of doing the Fringe, <laughs> I kill myself." <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still at the point where, um, in an attempt to get myself to work on the transcript of In the ceiling, but when we point out di Diet Coke is part of our dietary plan, we lose you? Pah. Yeah. Yeah. So your yeah. dad was an inventor? But I would, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he and another guy started a company that sold nappy fasteners. Um, snappy, uh, nappy fasteners. Snappy. <laughs> Buy snappy, it's good for babies. Uh, oh, is that the... Is that the fastest selling nappy fastener in uh, Sub Saharan Africa and parts of India in the 90s? I think you'll find it is, John. Holy shit! Are you telling me that you could leverage y your dad's snappy fortune into ruling India? Oh, hey, get them through the, the, the nappy secured on the, on the babies. The, yeah, hey. Vote for me, no more baby shit. No more baby shit. <laughs> and it's just you in the photo. Again, I thought that was going to go somewhere, and you guys are just against or it Or it's completely. a big picture of some baby shit, and I'm going, mm-mm-mm. And wait. Like with a big red line, like, no, no, no. I remember you once telling me when we were both very drunk on a boat. Yes. Uh, that, weren't you the face of snappy babies? I was, I was the face of snappy nappy fastness, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and weren't you like briefly living off that fortune? For, like there was something about it where you're like, and this is why I don't have a. And it was just this tiny, terrible photo of this weird baby. Just like. Because here's the thing: when you're big guys like us, these heads. This is how big our heads were Ini from birth. In initially, yeah. So we just look like convicts from Easter Island, or, or like, escapees from Easter Island. Is or the like Zordon line. from the Power Rangers. <laughs> just this kind of goes, that is a niche reference. Like, like, <laughs> in Did you hear that people started to laugh? Like some of the nerds were like, ha, ha. No. Oh, no, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I only watch Power Rangers for the articles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I got some money from that. So I got to avoid part-time jobs for a while. Thank you. Me at the age of one, before I had any concept of what I was doing, or what a photograph was, or nappies. Simpler times. Speaking of simpler times, I think it's time for our next guest. And that's why they call me the Segway Kid. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, are we ready for our next guest? Are we ready? <laughs> May I just say, that was all right. But we are being watched by literally one billion people. I'm sat next to the future president of India. You don't know. Yeah. Donald yeah. Trump is almost the president of the United States. Yeah. It's not that crazy that he could be the president of India. Yeah. Again, thank you, that side, for being a good comedy crowd. Yeah. You guys, let's fucking pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's try that again. We can edit. It's live in quotation marks. Ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for our next guest? We ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is doing her show at 10 to 7 or 6.50 at the Jack Dome. Please welcome Rachel Paris, everybody! Hello, everyone. Oh, it's very nice to be here live. Um, I, I don't know if any of you have seen my show. I normally have a piano in front of me, so this is very confrontational. But don't worry, I will still be singing. I don't want to start a panic or anything. Um, I, um, I, I can't drive. Um, give me a cheer if you can't drive as well. Oh, so many losers. Amazing. Um, no, we should just learn. But um, the, one of the reasons I haven't learned to drive is because I have quite bad spatial awareness and like left right and hand eye coordination and everything <laughs> shouldn't do that with the mic should i <laughs> it's not a good idea um and yet over the years because i play the piano proof <laughs> because i play the piano loads of friends and family have said to me that they think i should learn to drive because they think i'll be a really good driver because i play the piano <laughs> loads of people have said that something to do with the sort of coordination hand left right thing but i think what they forget is that in many ways Playing the piano and driving a car are two completely different things <laughs> in many ways. Other things people have said they think I would be good at because I play the piano include um, sewing, Lego, <laughs> typing, um, getting small things out of holes, uh, plaiting my hair, giving a hand job, uh, and rolling a doobie, which, if anything, clearly is the flute. A massive sort of anyway, as it happens, I excel at only one of those things. <laughs> and it's not hand jobs. <laughs> I don't even know how to do the gesture. <laughs> Is it like that? Never been sure. <laughs> don't come home with me tonight. <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> so, anyway, um, what was I oh yeah, so because I can't drive, because I can't drive, I travel on trains a hell of a lot. So I'm going to sing a song for you now which is uh, about what I think is the absolute worst thing you can encounter when you're on a long train journey. I'm sure many of you will have experienced this. Oh, and before I do it, just to be really super clear, because I've had trouble in the last few gigs, I'm, I'm not saying the word Hindu. <sighs> <sighs> Fucking hell. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hindu on a train <laughs> Cowboy hats and penis cakes <laughs> Neck tattoos and big L plates And voices like a foghorn in a drain Hindu on a train Groping every passing mail I suspect you've been to jail And God willing you might all go again and although I have so many things to say to you, I'm aware that there 
are six of you and all of you have had more fights than me I've never glassed someone but I do know how perhaps I'll glass you now and do on a train you brought your own speakers too brilliant to belt out Calvin Harris tunes. I mean, the maid of honor's clearly on cocaine. And do on a train. You see me staring and threaten me. Then drunkenly you set on me. And with a dick shaped bottle take your aim. I can do it. And be, <laughs> if you only knew, we're not so different, me and you. Just three months ago, my friends Hindu, we got drunk and pretty much hijacked a plane. We were worse than you. We went down on all the crew, mostly reluctant gay men, some women too. We got thrown out of Spain. You see, we're all the same, but you're not listening. You're bashing out my brain. Hindu on a train. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rachel. Hi, I've already dropped the equipment. That's fine. fine. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that was awesome. Thank you so much for singing. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Uh, so how, so uh, 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 Hindus, how many have you been on in your life? In my life, well, actually, I've been on about, only about 10 Hindus, but I've been to about 40, 45 weddings. What the fuck? <laughs> no. How many repeats? What, do you mean, people remarrying? Yeah. Uh, none. Is it just one polygamist? <laughs> 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 Will not stop. I'm just running out of things to say. <laughs> Forty-five, in like, in a, like since birth, or is this in like the last five years? That is since birth, to be fair. Yeah, but I just, I just get invited to a lot of weddings. Partly, partly it is because I get invited to sing or play at oh. like eighty percent of them, which is lovely. It's like such a privilege. It's privilege after privilege after privilege. <laughs> See, I nipped that in the bud. I had a summer where I got invited to five weddings. Yeah. And I realized after the third one that I was invited just because I was the only one that they knew would host. <laughs> and so at the fifth yeah. one, I just went, here's the deal. If I'm hosting, no present, I haven't been to a invited to a wedding since. I need to start doing that, definitely. Nice, save the money. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's also just, I, like, do you like weddings? Both of you do you like I weddings? I do, actually, yeah. yeah. I pretend not to, actually, in my show, because it's funny and not to, but I'm such, I, I love them. I always cry when the bride walks up the aisle. Yeah, so do I. There's something do about you? Yeah, I really oh, do. Yeah. I get, I'm a big set, like, I know what you're thinking. Really, John? Yeah, I'm a complicated onion. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all Nazi jokes and getting Pierre elected to the state house in India. I'm going to keep making those jokes and you will fucking yeah. laugh at them. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's something about, I like, I like a bit of romance. Oh, I love a bit yeah. of romance. But the, the problem is that there's two sorts of my brain, which is that I'll start crying, but then I'll be like, we are in a church. And neither one of you believe in God. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. That That's odd, isn't it? Boils really my strange. piss. Yeah. <laughs> it's so disrespectful. And I want to say something to the minister, being like, "You are a part of lies." Yeah. Do you? A lot of my friends say, um, "Oh, it's for my parents are religious." Uh, uh, but just because their parents go to church, but that's just a tradition thing. And then they're getting their kids christened, and then those kids will assume that my friends are religious, and they're not. Everyone's doing it for their parents, going back generations. Uh, oh, I got into big hot water because my I'm a godfather, and it, there was a christening, and it was I was the X factor where my whole family are you know waspy white people, and so like they believe in God, but as long as God is aware that they are above Him. And, <laughs> and so then they were like, John, you're going to be the godfather. And I was like, yeah, but I do not, I don't necessarily believe in that. And my, my grandmother said, just don't tell the minister, it'll be fine. <laughs> and I didn't read any of the emails before going into the ceremony. So when they then said, do you believe in God and renounce Satan? I went, sure. <laughs> and then 300 people at this church just stared at me like I just yelled like, hail Satan! It was very awkward. Because <laughs> I, I was brought up in the church. Like, I played the organ for my Methodist church growing up and everything. And like, it was in one of those Christian bands. 
you know what the Christian band. Oh, you know yeah. the Christian band. We, it was uh. amazing. We thought it was rock stars because we were. Um, Before, what was the name of your Christian band? Oh, I can't remember the name. I wish I'd thought of one. Like, we didn't really, because we just went from church to church, we didn't really have a proper name. We didn't, like, do any recordings. Did you do, if we had, I'd be selling them to you now. Did you do, like, covers of famous rock songs, but with Jesus kind of just sellotaped over yeah. a lot of the nouns. Stairway to literal heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, like, just sister act going from church to church, except I was on piano and vocals. Odds. I played, um, I played bass in a Christian band in my... Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to a Christian summer camp that was like a hippy-dippy Christian camp yeah, where they yeah, would yeah. like go through the Bible and be like, yeah, this part we don't believe in. Like it was very inclusionary. And uh, it went all askew uh, when they hired a new sort of chaplain for the camp. And he was crazy. <laughs> like I, remember, I can remember the legitimate day I was like, I don't think Christianity is a thing for me where he went, I know I'm going to heaven because I don't like gay people <laughs> and then he didn't realize that my friend Marnie was sat in the front row and she has a look that is very stereotypical to her sexuality and then he pointed at her and went right Arnie you know gay people are bad and there was a tension very similar to what's happened here actually <laughs> where everyone just went Whoa, big mistake there Padre and then she stood up and went actually it's Marnie and I'm gay and he went ah the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say now when I'm incredibly rude about things. <laughs> ah, the Lord works in mysterious ways. The president of India works in <laughs> mysterious ways. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, does India so. have a president? It does. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> you would I, know. I do? I would know. And so do you have any weddings coming up? I don't know why we're filming yes. a wedding. Biggie, this year, uh, I'm bridesmaid oh. for the first time. The big show. I'm singing the first song for one of my best friends. <laughs> And then the week after is another best friend's wedding, also singing the first song. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't have more than one best friend. Oh, okay. Better friends? <laughs> All right. Who would you help move first? What, move house? Yeah. <laughs> Not, Not move general. body. <laughs> Which person would you let pretend to be a puppet? <laughs> weekend at Bernie's yeah, kind of... Yeah. You're in a weekend in Bernie's type scenario. They're both. Dead. I can't answer this because they're going to see this. They, they, I can't they're shoot. fucking not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I might tell them about it. Well, that's up to you. To be fair, probably there is the an one, answer. No, well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but there is an answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's got. It's got to be the one who I'm bridesmaid for because we uh, we've been friends since like school, young school. Like for so many years, we've been friends. See, that's an interesting, this is, I, it drives me crazy when people say, like, there's a difference between men and women, but here, here we go. I find that ladies are much more inclined to be like, everyone I know is my best friend. <laughs> Whereas for men, there's like, we got one. Yeah. And then everyone else is on thin fucking ice. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Yeah. There's, there's one person who you would text at night if you needed to bury a corpse. Yeah. And then everyone else is... Could be that corpse. Yeah. 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 That's... If things went the wrong way... Yeah. Oh, if that guy died, you're fucked. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm, I'm like texting five people to help me with that corpse, which is more <laughs> useful to carry it. Also, great idea for a hen do. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the corpse of someone single them. Like a symbolic corpse. Yeah. They all bury. What's that? Rachel should sing another song? Very good idea. <laughs> this is why they hired me, because the segues. Oh, mwah. Uh, uh, Rachel, would you mind singing another delightful I'd, song I'd for I'd be us? absolutely delighted. Also, I was prepared for you to ask. So. It's almost as if we had a meeting beforehand. <laughs> Rachel Paris, once again, everybody. Oh, thank you. I feel really cheeky being on twice. Um, hello. Uh, so uh, the reason that I've been talking a lot about weddings and Hindus is because I had a big breakup this year, which is always a bit sad. Um, but I've been getting through it uh, partly by adhering to every breakup stereotype that you can do. Um, this fringe being one of them. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I know it looks fantastic because friends keep saying things to me like, good for you. <laughs> no, good for you. No, good, yeah. I thought you were joking, but you've done it. Right, okay. So I'm feeling great about the fringe. Um, I've also um, been trying to do some exercise, because you're supposed to, because it's supposed to like um, lift your mood and everything. And also, obviously, the time to hone your naked body is when no one is seeing it. Um, so I've been trying to... My friend Amber has been helping me do a bit of exercise. She's a runner. Um, 
she's one of those people who's come to running sort of late in her life and just decided to go like just it's like you know a religion but wildly less imaginative um and so i've been trying to do she's californian uh sorry i shouldn't do those eyebrows that's rude isn't it she's californian um she, she says she says things like um if I don't go running every day, I can literally feel my heart getting clogged. <laughs> she's not a scientist. Um, she's a good friend, she's a good friend. Um, and she says, running makes me feel so alive. I have to explain to her, running makes me feel dead. <laughs> dead, I hate it, it's the pits. I hate running of all exercise. Um, it's just, it's a cross between like having a heart attack and getting beaten up by the air. <laughs> hate running but I have been doing a little bit of exercise and the, the way I get through the exercise is to make sure that everyone knows about it so uh, when Amber asks me how I'm doing this is what I say to her thank you there's something deep inside me that I'm longing to get out I have to tell somebody I want to scream and shout I'll see your eyes cast open wide when I tell you I I went to the gym I went to the gym Ask me what I did today and watch me grin I went to the gym I went to the gym I'll tell you three or four more times that I went to the gym. Did you go to the gym? I'll hear you ask. Yes, I went to the gym, I'll say. When was your last time at the gym? You plead and my answer is today. The gym where I go when I go to the gym is a wonderful gym, you'll see. Or maybe you haven't been to the gym, or at least not a recent. Unlike me, I went to the gym seven minutes on the treadmill. I went to the gym walking on the treadmill. And I hope none of you forget that I went to the gym. I was there for half an hour, including the shower. And I must be fit because I didn't break a sweat. The man who works at the gym came across the gym to talk to me at the gym. And he asked if I'd been to the gym before. And I said, what gym? And he said, this gym. And I looked at the gym, at the gym I was in. And I smiled and I looked at him. And I asked that man, can I call you Jim? He said, no, my name is Craig. Did you say Greg? No, I said Craig. He said, and I said, Craig, Craig, Craig. I went to the gym. I went to the gym. I went to the gym, and I've even bought some shares in JD Sports. And what will be my life now? I know that it must change. This brave new world around me, so exciting and so strange. But for the first time since I've been a member, which will be three years come this December, I went there and I'll always remember when I went to the gym. I went to the gym one time. Turner. Uh, hello, John Hastings oh. and audience. Mm. Where did Pierre Novelli go? The magic of him walking over there and Chris taking a seat. Uh, Chris Turner, you're doing a show 9.45 at the Beside and 11.50 in the morning at the Queen Dome. I am. I, will, I won't be tired, or at least I'll have good makeup. 
for it. <laughs> I'm, I live with a baby at the moment, so it's good practice. What an amazingly weird sentence that was. Yeah, <laughs> I just realized that I it's wear not makeup. my baby. What? Wait, no, um, let's unpack this gift the, now. <laughs> the parents of the baby are my flatmates, and I came back from a tour in Australia, and they had had a baby. Was she pregnant when she when you left? I, I was only on tour for two months, so I hope so. <laughs> so you were aware. You were aware what you're walking into. You didn't put the key in the lock in here, like what? And you're like, <laughs> Interesting. No, I, I was aware. Yeah, I was aware. What's that like? I feel like if you have a baby, it's not a time for flatmates. It's, a good, have... no, it's a good baby. It is a good baby. Um, and I, I get on well with it. Chris, I I got, feel... I'm going to say it right now. You do not have the face to say something like, it's a good baby. <laughs> it sounds like you're breeding it to race it. <laughs> also the fact that we're both calling it it. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't want to... Do you know... even know the gender or you just refer to it as the shit thing? <laughs> I do, but I'm gonna, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna wait for it till it's 18 to make that decision to, well, you know, I won't even name it. We'll call it baby, um, I'm trying to think of a non-gender specific name, uh, Ian. Baby Ian. <laughs> and I just... Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm saying it, but I think politically correctness has finally gone mad. <laughs> that we I... don't know the baby's gender, but we do know its name is Ian. <laughs> Oh, it's not. No, that's a fake name I've given it to protect his identity. What an actor you are. Thank you. Um, I, I thought I was getting along well with it because it is a good baby and it's maybe four months old. This baby will be at the French performing a show, by the way. This is, this is me giving it a plug. What the fuck? I know. It the got French on... has gone mad. What do you... That's got to be illegal. Oh, it got on page three of the Times. For its... No, it's not illegal because as long as it only works six out of seven days a week, it's fine. Which is... Are I think, I think are we're allowed only five days out of seven, so... Don't start pulling these threads. Now, are you telling me that there's a baby doing stand-up at the fringe? No. The show... Oh, it, sketch it, comedy. It sits Makes down, sense. it sits in a room for half an hour, and you come and... It's called Come Look at the Baby. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. This is... This is a real show. It's real. Where, is it at the Pleasant? No. They oh, said then they, why are we talking no, about it? No, they said it's probably illegal. I, I'm not a police officer. I know. We're all shocked. Yeah. However, other venues, <laughs> just the tonic, said we're fine with this level of risk. For those of you watching at home, I don't know what that is. Just the tonic. I, I know what risk. <laughs> Thanks for following me along on that one there, audience. You really just... Watch me jump into that lifeboat to try and save that segment, and you all just watch me drown. I just, I, it's, it's a good baby. It deserves an audience. And I, I, I think I've been getting on well with it until I had a dream. This is maybe a week ago now, where I was, I was looking after the baby in the dream, and uh, as in I would also look after is it in real life. Is this how you hold a baby? Yeah. You don't just do the one arm and you sit it oh, right no, there? That's too, no, my tricep is too feeble. Um, I... I was looking after it, and it, it vomed a bit on, like, its arm, and it was almost going to dribble on me. What a slob. And, and I, said to the ba I said to baby Ian, I said, baby Ian, you vomed. Let me clean it up. Just keep your arm there. And it just looked at me dead in the eye, and it moved its arm, and all the vom went over me. And I said, oh, baby Ian. And baby Ian said in a grown voice, I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> And so this has now brought to mind the fact that I probably am deeply disturbed by living with a baby and have repressed it <laughs> yeah, until that, I go to bed. There's a lot of stuff in that that's... Also, have you ever Googled like a dream, like put it into a dream dictionary? Because no. it, it all comes back to impotence eventually. <laughs> I put in a dream because I'm getting ready for the Edinburgh Festival and I put in this dream. I showed up for my Edinburgh Festival show and there was no one at the audience except for all of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> who all stood up as one and went, we're going to boo no matter what happens. <laughs> and then I started in, and they all just booed me, and I put that into a dream dictionary, and it said, your dick doesn't work. I had that as a real gig with the booing, not with girlfriends, because that would be a typical average Edinburgh audience, which is four. Um, I... You only have four ex-girlfriends? Yeah. Interesting. I'm only 26. Really? I mean, my, my long-term girlfriend is in the audience. That makes it sound like there's going to be loads more. Don't worry. Um, the, this, is a more, this is a more interesting bit now. It was, um, weird, it was weird that you just pointed at the staircase. There'll be more. <laughs> She's left. Um, I had a gig uh, two years ago at Christmas time where I walked on stage and they just booed 
for the whole 15 minutes. And I did my time because you want to get paid. And afterwards, they came up and went, fair play, lad. We were going to boo anyone, regardless of who it was, but then we saw your face. <laughs> and they were just a group of oh. army soldiers who um, just were doing something new for each act. And so oh. they just booed me for 15 minutes. Military gigs sometimes make you really root for the enemy. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like, some of them can be awesome. Other of them, you're just like, uh, my name is now Al-Qaeda. And... I yeah, I'm sticking with it. All right. And it was the Canadian military, which we have. And what happened with me is it was for the Seabees, which is the construction battalion. So it's the guys that like land, that build the base. So they like shoot some people, build the kitchen. This, this shows that I've never built anything. This is how I think you build a kitchen. You just unzip it. And, um, and they, uh, it was Christmas time. And at Christmas time at the base, um, you are, uh, the bar is open as long as the general is there. And the general drank so much that he passed out in the corner of the room. <laughs> so it was full sail, like it was a land rush on this bar. Like they, as I was about to go on to Compare, they just went, uh, we've ran out of vodka and whiskey and white wine, and we're almost out of red wine. And then I went, what's left? And they went, Sambuca, Jagermeister, and gin. And I was like, someone is gonna be blind tonight. <laughs> and I went on, it was fine. The next act went on, it was, it was teetering, but it was getting crazy. And then the last act went on, and he mentioned a city that had a hockey team that wasn't the city we were in. And they screamed the C word at him for 15 minutes, and then he went, I can say it too, and then just randomly pointed into the crowd and yelled it, inadvertently yelling it at the general's wife, who was pregnant. <laughs> And then they went, gig is over, and they said, you're not going to get paid. And then this comedian just decided to take a stand. Do you ever have that friend that's just like, this is the line. Oh, cross this line. You do not. And he just went, I am getting paid because she is a. And then he said the C word. And then the husband general woke up, and there was a bit of a brouhaha. And finally, the comedian, to get out of it, went, you know what? I'll pay my dues. And then he just took out a hundred Canadian dollars, which is like 4,000 British pounds at this point, <laughs> and just threw them at his feet and went, that's how much I'm getting for the gig, and now you have it. And we were getting a lot more than that. And I went, I'm not gonna say, I went, you're only gonna pay a hundred? And he went, oh, I'm getting a grand. But he doesn't fucking know. <laughs> It was a good time. Is, I mean, <laughs> my, my one other military gig story is arriving at RAF Bryce Norton doing a gig for the loaders who they don't fly the planes, they put the stuff on the planes and take it off. And we were warned by pilots, this will be a tough gig. And we got there. Of course there the was, pilots would say that. Yeah. It's like, who are the pilots going to make fun of but the people that loading the stuff on the plane? Very true. They did not make it easy for us. There was a poster on, in the bar which advertised the comedy night and it said... Uh, it was run by a company called the, the Free Beer Comedy Show in Oxford, where you bought a ticket for seven pounds that included a beer, and uh, so free beer. And they called it F Free Beer Comedy Show, which was the production company, but there was no free beer at this gig, um, and no one's on this. To make it worse, it just said Comedy Night and had a massive picture, and obviously they'd just gone, Comedy, we need a picture of the poster, Googled Comedian, and so it said Comedy Night with a huge picture of Peter Kay's face. I, so we I turned up, it. three little Oxford comedians, uh, and were met with just vast disappointment. And then the night ended in everyone whipping their cocks out and helicoptering. Well, they called it helicoptering, it's windmilling, but they called it that. I don't know how you poshed that story up, but you did. Thank you. That was beautiful. That they call it helicoptering. We in Oxford, windmilling. <laughs> you never said Millstoning. Yeah. <laughs> Um, quick question. Yeah. Were they helicoptering or were you winning? No, milling? they were helicoptering. And I remember when we left the gig, there were some other soldiers coming around uh, and we said to them, oh, you might want to not go in the bar. Everyone's got their dicks out dancing in a circle. And they hastened their steps. <laughs> Wait a minute, they didn't put it back in once you guys had left? Or just no, like... no, no. They were in a circle dancing around. Just... It's quite hard to do the motion while sat. Uh, that does, that's not cue for me to stand because this mic cable is not long enough and my inhibitions are only water-based at this moment. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just imagining the next morning, they're gathering for a briefing meeting to load a plane up to do some sort of like black op in Australia for some reason. And uh, yeah, all right. And they're all just like out there and there's one guy who's just came straight from the bar and his dick's still out. <laughs> what did we do last night? 
Are you familiar with the vehicle helicopter? <laughs> that. I thought I'd get more out of that. Evidently, <laughs> I didn't. It's the story of your life. Everyone's maybe upset that you, you know, all my fans are like, hey, you said he's from Oxford. Actually, he's from Manchester. <laughs> Just, uh, Thank you, London crowd. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I, I don't know British accents. Literally, Scottish Oh, no, people, I don't sound like I'm from Manchester. I don't. <laughs> Why would you? You all sound like you're... <laughs> people from Manchester watching, that's Chris Turner. I'm from Manchester. Are you? I love it. I lived there 19 years. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Very good. It, it would be on my Wikipedia page if I was notable enough to warrant one. As we've discovered from the Wikipedia history and talk page on my Wikipedia page. Wait a someone... minute, you do... did you just plug your Wikipedia oh, page? No. no, I don't have one because someone is very keen that it does not exist. <laughs> Typical fucking mank, am I yeah. right, guys? <laughs> no? Good. No, Chris, someone told me. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you love, you're, you, you're, uh, I was about to say, you're a rapper? I, I mean, I am, yeah. How do you become a rapper? Um... Is it like being a comedian or a pirate where you're just like, I am one, and they're like, yeah, fucking get on the yeah, boat. Yeah, that's my, my entourage there. Three pieces of ticker tape. Uh, Are we at all concerned about the fact the building is slowly melting into what, quite frankly, would be a spectacular finale? <laughs> um, I, I, I think in the way you fall into comedy and you just kind of get on stage and start doing something and you realize, oh, that's fun. I listened to hip-hop when I was about 12, and I thought, this sounds, this like, this is, I like the music a lot. It was very energetic and nice, and I, I enjoyed it, and I... Favorite rapper? Fa uh, ooh, it's difficult. Uh, favorite rapper of all time, MF Doom. Currently, it's kind of a toss-up between Kendrick Lamar and Earl Sweatshirt. Very good. I'm really happy you didn't say Drake. No, I mean, I don't mind Drake as much as other people do. I um, fucking hate him. He's a liar. He's not from the street. He's a posh boy from Toronto. He's from an area called Forest Hill, and that's... Certainly not crime-ridden. It's a hill in a forest region. <laughs> he, was on, he was on our equivalent of Skins, which was called Degrassi. It aired for a startling long time. And he played a kid named Andre, who was in a wheelchair, even though he wasn't. And in one of the episodes, they tried, and one of my friends was a writer on it, and they tried to make him rap as Drake was building up. And this is what makes him such a gee bag, is they said, uh, hey, uh, can you rap in this episode? And he went, no, nah, man, that's my art and this is my job. <laughs> and I was just like, someone should have wheeled him off a cliff. And yeah. Wow. I'm coming for you, Drake! <laughs> you know, his real name is Aubrey. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> That's the name of my grandmother's friend who is a Welsh funeral director. <laughs> How pleasant it would be to have a Welsh funeral. So sing-songy. Oh, so I heard your disease. <laughs> <laughs> That was that's such I, a good impression of him. That's why I'm the third best Welsh impersonator. What's that, the Brexit? That won't be economically <laughs> disastrous for us. <laughs> uh, so, Chris, you were going uh, to send us out with some sweet, sweet rhymes. I was. I was going to pop up on that mic and drop <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> I like how you phrase it like Do you're it. not going... What was that? Do it! I will, sir. It would be a really weird finale to say you were going to do it, but we're out of time. Yeah. So. Yeah. We were going to do that, but now we're just going to bash break, break some more? <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can head over there. Do you want to be my hype man and get some applause for it? Do I? This seems so scripted, but it's not. Yeah, it's not. That's our skill. Again, thank you, that side of the room. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, before Chris meanders over, he's going to need to unplug his microphone. And there is only one way to do that smoothly, and that's with a gale force round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Turner taking the mic. Thank you. You can tell I meandered to the microphone because that there is the Oxbow Lake. <sighs> it's one for my geography friends. Um, that was not scripted. Hello. Uh, cool. So, yeah, I'll do a little bit of hip-hop for you. Um, before we, we do that, um, I genuinely am a fan of hip-hop, by the way. Uh, people doubt that. They're like, oh, really? Um, no, I was 12 years old. I, I said I heard my first hip-hop song, uh, the Marshall Mathers LP uh, by Eminem. Some of you guys might know him by his Roman name, Thousand and Thousand. And... <laughs> Yeah, and when you listen to that, you move into more hip-hop stuff. I'm listening to stuff like Dr. Dre as well, and my mum hated it. You know, I loved it. I'm like, oh, Dr. Dr. E. She said, the violent, misogynistic lyrics and imagery made me a worse person. And I don't know what that bitch-ass slut's talking about. But being, I, I bought this when I was 12. This, uh, for those of you 
not au fait with Gangster Couture. This is it's a bandana in the colours of the LA Gang, the Bloods. It is not the original, because that was stolen by bullies. This... <laughs> I used to wear this walking around thinking it gave me carte blanche to use gangster phrases. So phrases not like carte blanche, but phrases such as I'm a pop a cap in your ass. And that does not make you sound gangster. That makes you sound like an inept gynecologist. But I thought, I thought it made me cool. And I got, I got bullied for it, right? I got abuse shouted at me on a daily basis from idiots in white vans that ironically said no tools in this vehicle. And I understand why. It's because I thought this looked pretty fly. Oh no, it looks like I'm about to shout the milky bars are on me. Uh, but I am genuinely a, a, a huge fan of rap, so what I want to do is uh, ask you guys, we're going to get the U into humour, because fuck America, that's how you spell it. Think of a word, a topic or a phrase that you would like to hear a hip-hop song about. Three rules. Number one, no food. Number two, no animals. That's for your own benefit. Those are boring suggestions, okay? Number three, nothing obvious, nothing at the forefront of your mind, right? If it's the first thing that came to your brain, think something different, dig deeper. The best suggestion I've ever had, ninth century crop rotation. That's from a child. So uh, let's, let's get five suggestions. We'll take four in kind of segments, and then we'll get a wild card. So uh, this, uh, this is a little kind of segment here. What do you guys want to hear a hip-hop song about? March of the Penguins. Delightful, the March of the Penguins. Word from this segment here? Corinthian Pillars. Corinthian Pillars. Absolutely <laughs> lovely. Corinthian Pillars, the March of the Penguins. Word from this segment? Medieval Jousting. Medieval Jousting. Medieval Jousting. Corinthian Pillars, the March of the Penguins. Word from this final little... Uh... Cryptography. 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 Medieval Jousting. Uh, Corinthian Pillars and March of the Penguins. Uh, uh, obviously... People on the internet might... This is all, it's all made up. This is all improvised. This isn't planned or anything. Um, so I'm very happy... Mr Hastings, do you want to drop one in? This, again, we haven't said this. I just want to give you a chance to drop, drop. A, a suggestion in. Yes. My suggestion would be... Kayak. Kayak. Lovely. Cool. Uh, so kayak, Corinthian pillars, medieval jousting, March the Penguins and cryptography. This, ladies and gents, uh, boys and girls and people of the internet, is a freestyle rap. That's a rap made up on the spot based entirely on those suggestions. None of this is prepared or, and will never be performed again. Uh, don't worry, right? It's going to be entirely about Corinthian pillars, medieval jousting, uh, kayak, march the penguins, and cryptography. And don't worry, it's not anywhere near as atrociously shit as you're expecting a 26-year-old privately educated middle-class white boy to be. <laughs> they seem very unconvinced. But don't worry, if we can drop that beat, good sir, let's get this shizzle going for rizzle. Yeah! Oh, it's going to be fun! You are not on board, but that's fine! Yeah, I need everyone on board. Yeah, jump, get on board. Everybody with me, man. I take it slow and sonorous like Morgan Freeman. I see him there sitting in the Raiders booth. He got the film on to tell you the truth. I know it was overdubbed from a French original. Much of the penguins, everybody be like, y'all just walk around sitting on the snow. If you got an egg right down below, that means you a bloke. That's the male penguin. It's like they are the metabolic engine, making sure they got it nurturing inside. Yeah, nine months the penguin provides by not nine months, that's not the pregnancy. You can check it up on Wikipedia and see. You gotta keep going. Yeah, spring to March anyway. That's the penguins. We know they march. I just fly like a lodge, like I'm sitting in the tree. Let me knock y'all off your horses with ease. Knock you down and drink some bad wine. When I do the jousting on my equine, not like Peter Schaff of the play called Equus, but medieval times. I have a lot of whole fuss. Cause I wear a big helmet. Yes, I'm gonna harm you. Coming at y'all with my jousting armor. Coming over to the Royal Armory. Mate, you can see the jousting armor of Henry VIII that's up in Leeds in the north of England. He likes to have the jousting lance in right hand, the other side. He got a big metal protector. He's the king, yeah, the county's protector. And come at you, yeah, you be in there getting hit on the chest with all the splinters. Hitting on the shields, will you yield for him? I got the field of cloth of gold, get it all in. That's a jousting tournament, yes, I know, I'm no silla. Molly headed when I rap about all the pillars. Okay, I do this, yeah, you can't ignore it. I go about ionic and then I got the Doric. But the one, yeah, I don't mean to boast. The one is the most architecturally the most decorated at the top. A horn of plenty, cornucopia, Corinthian, get it in me. Fill it out there on the front of the Colosseum. Wait, no, it's only temples that need them. Go into the Parthenon, the beat stopped. It doesn't matter, we can flow with the hip hop. A cappella fella, when I do it with these, I gotta rewind. Yeah, I take it with my knees like a kayak. I go whitewater rafting. Spell the same front as back. I am crafting K A Y and an A K too. Count a palindrome when I spit it for you. The last thing 
and okay, yeah, ever since I was 12 years old, I've been like obsessed with codes I want to discover. Yeah, I'm going to give you some knowledge of combo batch with the enigma. Cryptography coming, no apology. Do you want to come to the crypt with me? I know that's basically like a cemetery, but it's got a lot of codes. Yeah, land of plenty going over there, trying to decipher the tombstone. If you win Mensa, you do this at home. Last thing, yeah, I give it the slip. I'm so good at codes recruited by MI6. Thank you so much for watching. We will be doing this six times. I don't know why I'm yelling now. Uh, we'll be doing this six times uh, at the Edinburgh Fringe in 2016. Um, please uh, follow us on Twitter and at Facebook, uh, all under at The Pleasants for uh, Showtimes. Thank you so much for watching at home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for everyone putting this together. My name is John Hastings. Have a very good night. Good night!